guys welcome back to the channel um, I'm going to be doing uh, another vlog now on my new lithium Roma battery that some people might have seen me install um, just basically the performance of the battery over the next week um, we're going away up to Scotland and Yorkshire for a week during the half term week and during that time I'm going to do a few little tests on the battery now I haven't got the kit to be able to drain a battery um, work out the amp hours during every drain and then recharge it and calculate the times so it's not that sort of test it's purely a life test of the battery in the van with our setup switching certain things on and off and showing you how it performs so another thing if you keep an eye on my channel um, after the half term I'm going to be fitting one of these to the van this is a Victron Blue Smart charger this will charge lithium batteries lead acid starter batteries and AGM batteries and then a few others in the profile the one I've got here is a 12 volt slash 10 so it's a 10 amp charger I purely bought this because with the EBL now disconnected on the charge if you've seen my previous vlogs it can't charge a lithium battery so we've had to disconnect the fuse for the charging of the lithium um, with that fuse disconnected um, it then takes away the charge to start a battery there's not any way around it apart from taking apart the EBL and rewiring it which might not be an easy job because of the way the setup in the, um, looking at the PCB is um, fitting some really complicated electronics to block it from charging lithium which is one option I looked at but was getting too complicated compared to fitting one of these um, so everything was coming <coughs> too complicated and I still want a charge on my start battery when I'm not using the van and it's plugged in over winter say for a month or we're not using it and I want to keep that starter tops up also, when we're on some sites, you pay for electric uh, a pitch and you automatically get electric hookup on some sites. So it's a shame not to use that, plug in, keep the start and battery topped up and use things like electric toasters and that. So that's quite handy. I wasn't too worried about the lithium side of it because we've got the 300 watts of solar. Um, it should hold up and the B2B charges really well. So we'll show you that over the next week, um, how that performs. But because I have got this, um, now I will be fitting this and showing how I'm going to plug set this up quite very very simply so that I can plug it between lithium um, to charge lithium up if we do run that down low enough and we're on a site for a week so um, solar's causing a problem and we're not moving around as much or plug it back into the starter motor and then charge the starter, um, motor, uh, starter battery um, up so I'll be doing that when we get home it'll be quite a simple setup and that will probably finalise the whole electrical setup on the van apart from if we do decide to go down the inverter route for a microwave which is something we've been discussing because the uh, oven on here isn't that good um, and we might get more use out of a microwave than we do the oven anyway enough talking um, I'll grab the camera and I'll show you at the moment what I'm going to do before we go away so first thing a few things to um, show you at the moment I'm charging the battery it's at 99.4% charged. If I push this here, it's taking in 1.7 to 1 amp, usually drops down to, on the solar charging. Um, and it's got 198.7 amp hours. I just want to show you that because I want to show you the app as well, which I've shown before. And it's shown on here that it's at 199.04 amp hours, which is pretty accurate to my gauge. It's taking in 1.5 amp current, which is exactly what my gauge is showing. So I just want to show you on the Victron um, setup what we're getting. We're getting <clears throat> about 27 watts out of the panels, uh, just between 15 and 17 volts. And it's saying here it's trying to put in two amps, which is not a lot because I've got a 300 amp, uh, 300 watt solar panels on the roof. And I'll just show you what the day is like today. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's a very cloudy day. The sun is just poking through, so I'm getting the two amps. Early on, when the clouds were over it, and it's quite dark out here, I was getting less than one amp. So I thought I'd just show you that because um, a lot of people say that they can rely on solar 100%. This is the UK lower land near Kent. Um, we're going up to Scotland, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes um, over the next week. Um, I don't like to 100% rely on solar. It does do really well in the summer, but now we're going into October and the winter months. Um, we're really are dropping down low on the wattage on the solar so one of the things I want to do before we go away is drain my battery a little bit percentage wise um, because I want to show you the amount of current I can get on the B2B when we're driving along and the solar when the battery is slightly depleted so to do that I'm going to turn this solar off and to show you this for some people that have never seen it before 
I go into settings, click on the top one called battery, and then you've got say a charge enabled switch there. If I select that switch so it goes grey, it says there that I'm going to be disabling the solar so it won't be charging the battery. Click OK. Now it says to enable charging if I want to recharge it. If I go back and back again, you can see now I've got zero amps going out of solar and zero wattage. And you can see up here now, my battery is draining at 0.096, that's nearly 0.1 of an amp. And this is another thing to show you of interest to some people that um, don't realise that with nothing switched on the van, and all I've got running really is the wow heater electronics which is flashing, the fridge will have some background electronics running, um, the panel is on but I haven't got anything switched on in the van, there's nothing at all charging in the van USB wise, and as you can see you're pulling nearly 0.1 of an amp out of the batteries. So you do drain the batteries over time even though you're not using them, so it is worth if you haven't got decent solar set up to isolate your batteries if you're putting your van into storage. You say it and someone was asking not long ago on the electronics um, group on Facebook, which is another excellent group to go on to. Um, as most home ele electric, sorry. So now the van is not charging. What I'm going to do over at my fridge, I'm going to turn my fridge on. Now I'm going to run the fridge on free bar. I'm not going to use the night mode for tonight. Um, and it's two days now, like I say, before we go away. So the fridge running now is going to pull a lot more current out of my battery and drain the battery slightly. So over here now, you can see we're pulling three amps roughly out of the battery. That will be intermittently switching on, not continuously three amps, because obviously when the temperature gets up, it drops down and turns off. But at the start up of the fridge, because the fridge is warm at the moment, it's going to run that for quite a bit, a bit to drain the battery. Right, and just show you another little um, app that I've got. This is the Liontron app. Um, Matthias um, on the Facebook group for Age of Twins um, said about this app, and this also connects to your battery. Just gives you a little bit more information, really. Um, only a little bit, but it's a nice little app. Roma didn't um, say about this, but it connects to the Bluetooth OK. So this is showing 99% charge, 198 amp hours left. Um, it's showing my current coming out at minus 4.3, which is 13.5 volts, and we're pulling about 60 watts. Now, with this one, if I click down on the button down there, I can actually get the cell voltages on this one, so I can see how balanced each cell is. Right, so that'll be it for the next two days. That'll drain the battery down. I expect we'd lose probably 20% maybe on the batteries. That's a bit of a guess from what I've seen in the past. So we see how that works over two days there, no solar, nothing's charging these, this lithium battery for now. It's just purely the electronics that I showed you, which is about less than 0.1 of an amp, and the fridge running continuously on standard setting at free bar. And it's quite an interesting test to show people how much this fridge really pulls um, on your battery, because with the AGM batteries that Asia provide, these fridges can kill them batteries quite easily. So what we do then, <clears throat> the day we get going, I'll show you this tomorrow, after 24 hours if I remember, and the day we get going, um, I'm gonna show you the amount of current charge we can get from the Victron B2B, which is what I've got on this van, which most people know if they've seen my vlog. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this is to show you why you need to have protections to your van, or vehicle, charging systems, when you're fitting lithiums, because the amount of current you can really pull into these, and without the protections like the B2B and lithiums that I've got, you will overheat and damage cables and electronics with your van if you put a massive lithium in and don't have any protection. All right, so a little update in the fridge at the moment. Um, I've left it, I've, so I started this at nine o'clock yesterday and the fridge has been running now on the three bars um, till the following day, it's four o'clock now. Um, and I have been running this day and night with not using the night mode on here. And the fridge started off with ambient temperature and just turned on from cold. And so I got home last night, because I was working nights last night, and the battery started off at 100%, and the charge on the battery went down to, I'll show you a little screenshot of my app. So it went down to 160 amp hours. We used 40 amp hours then, over a nine hour period, so I checked it this morning, which is about 20% of the battery. So it just shows you how much this fridge can take 
over from start up from cold so it's well worth charging these fridges up of electric hookup before you get on your journey right so it's now four o'clock it's been another 10 hours since i said um that i did that test this morning um you can see now i've used 76.9 amp hours uh, percent, sorry, percentage on the battery um looking at the app now we can see on the app that we're pulling we pulled an extra five amp hours we're down to now 155 amp hours total um so in the last 10 hours since last uh, since this morning i've only pulled another five amp hours so on the first um, nine hours nine to ten hours off the fridge start up it's pulling around 40 amp hours to get the temperature down in the fridge and as soon as the temperature's down it's now clicking in and out you can see i'm pulling 2.3 amps there now um, and it's just pulling out just about around five maybe six amp hours in a 10 hour period so it's not pulling as much now as it was initially so with this theory we're not going away now until tomorrow morning six o'clock tomorrow morning so it's around another 10 hours or so um, until tomorrow morning so i'm expecting to drop that down to 150 maybe 148 amp hours um, by tomorrow before we get going um, so we should be down roughly 70 percent in the capacity of the battery um, and we'll see how we get on with charging that then all right so we're on the move now so with the b2b running is this the roma um, app that's running you can see we're putting 30 amps now into the batteries um, batteries according to the app is at 40 143 amp hours all right so i didn't get the chance to show you the solar and um, b2b charging because um i went to sleep because i was uh, just come off nights um, but the battery is fully charged within about two hours running at that 30 amps on the B2B so it shows you how fast these batteries charge we're now at Morrison's now, I'm showing you this now because we're at 199.34 amp hours and you can see with the solar switched on now I'm getting four and it jumps sometimes to six amps when the solar's out bright um, there you go, 5.8 there, 6.2 so we're still getting a massive charge really from the solar's up um, at the moment into the battery which is amazing really look at that eight so anyway that's that's um it at the moment we'll see how the week goes on now i'll do little snapshots as we go along we're moving around a bit for a whole week and we're not going to have any electric hookups it'd be interesting to see how well this battery stands up with no electric hookup for off grid for a week all right so we're one day in on our two day stopover with no electric hookup we just rely on solar and we had the fridge turned off at night we didn't use much last night electrics we didn't have the tv on we didn't even have the heater on um we're down at 184 amp hours we didn't get a lot of solar yesterday and we're taking six amps out of the batteries now because the fridge has just been on and we have got the heat on this morning before we get going and if you can see that if it comes out we're at 91.6 percent and so i'll take a screenshot of this this was yesterday you can see that we had uh, about 40 watts out of the panels out the whole day so not a lot at all in the way of charge you can probably calculate that into count and see how many amp hours we'd have got all right so we just got back from doing ben nevis um been out for the day um so the van's been empty we've not been using it it's only the things been running is the fridge and we put the heating on when we got back you can see we're down to 89 percent i don't know if this is coming out in the camera but i'll show you um, a screenshot of the app in a minute so we didn't get much sun today but it was a really cloudy day it's sunny now um so we're probably getting some but um although we're getting some we've got the heater on so we're actually pulling current like one amp out of, the, out of the battery um most of the power for the fridge and everything else is being run off the solar because we've got a bit of solar out there but you can see uh we're, it's not a major thing really 179 amp hours so in two days um we're down to 89 percent we're moving tomorrow so this will get up to 100 percent no problems but if i was staying here for a week solely on uh, on stand on solar and we wasn't getting really good days in about a week i think i might be struggling on the battery but that's not bad though really off grid for a week and the solar's not kicking in normally the solar would kick in within a week all right so for the solar it's interesting i've got two solars come up there makes you wonder whether someone on the site's just pulled up next to us we've got a solar as well um, just lock into mine because it'd be pin protected anyway and you can see we're putting 0.3 of an amp on that so it's not a lot at the moment it is sunny outside but it is four o'clock this afternoon bright blue skies out there and um, we're not getting a lot of current 
on the soda, probably because of the, how far we're up now in Scotland, I would have said. Um, today's yield is pretty good. We've got 91 watts um, maximum, and we've got 150 watt hours, which is much better than yesterday. We've only got 40 watt hours. So we have had a bit more sun today than we did yesterday. But my maximum voltage on the battery has got up to 13.5, so it didn't get up to 14.2. Probably where it sat on float, maybe that's the, beads, uh, the control that did that. Um, so it's interesting to see that we're not getting nowhere near what I normally get. These are some of the levels that I normally get. There you go, 330 watt hours there on that one, 10 days ago. Um, and that's when he down south, good weather, 710 watt hours. That's quite a good day. Anyway, that gives you an idea that when you run 120 watt solars, you're going to be lucky to get anything to charge the battery. I've got 300 watts up there with this setup, and I'm still lucky to get a little bit of a charge on the batteries. So this is our last day here at Glen Nevis campsite. Um, hopefully it's coming out in the gauge. We're at 83.3% on the battery. And as you can see in the solar, we're just putting 0.5 on amp today. It's not a lot of gain. We're not going to really be sustaining what we're taking out of the battery. Um, it's extremely bad weather out there again, raining, which we've had a couple of days. It's only two days. I mean, 83% is fine. We've got loads of power still. But if I was here for four days or so, we'd be probably putting down to, I reckon, about 40 or 50% low on the batteries. So you, if it was an AGM battery, you'd probably kill your battery and would definitely need electric hookup or move on. But this is good, but lithium batteries can hold up and go down much lower. We're not used much. Um, we're using a bit this morning. We've got 3.6 amps coming out. We're using a heater this morning for an hour and the fridge is on. Most nights we turn the fridge off, so we're only using the fridge during the day on free bar. We've not used any TV and any little heating at night because we've been out most nights and we've been out all day yesterday climbing Ben Nevis, so we've not been in the van at all. So we've used 166 amp hours and most of this is due to fridge and a little bit of heating. So if we're more living in the van, watching telly, um, charging laptops, etc., we would use a hell of a lot more than that. Um, but it just gives you an idea of what power you can use on your van in different stages if you use microwaves and that you kill it completely but we're on the move today so we'll get this up to 100% because we've got quite a couple of hours drive and you've seen earlier we get 33 30 to 33 amps out of the charging systems B2B or solar right guys so it's the last two days of our holiday I'm going to be doing the battery check apart from when we get home I'm going to show up a few bits um, so we've had some pretty miserable weather I don't know what you can see out there it's been cloudy it's dark outside Still, this is morning. Yesterday was total rain as well. Um, so we're pulling 0.4 amp at the moment. Um, and the history, you can see yesterday has got 60 watt hours. And 60 watt hours day four. Roughly, if I work that out, that's roughly four, or maybe five amp hours of charging to the batteries, which isn't a lot. With 300 watts of solar on the roof. So it's not great for solar, but in the lithium, it's quite powerful enough to get us through the days. We haven't got anything and we're going to be driving today which the b2b would then pull all this uh, battery up to full power right so the battery here i've got 154 amp hours remaining so we've used nearly 50 amp hours well, all we've done so far we've been out most days so we're not using a lot of power not many lights on apart from a couple of hours in the evening we've watched two hours of tv during the day um, we've had the heater on in the evenings and the fridge is running during the day but we switched the fridge off and the heating off at night so if you're running the fridge at night and heating at night and watching a bit more telly, you'd have gone through a lot more amp hours than what we're using. Um, and percentage wise, 76% because we've got the 200 amp hour, 200 amp hour lithium. Um, so we've got plenty of power. We could go quite a few more days yet. I reckon we can get at least eight days with low solar like this and no electric up um, before we have to start worrying about turning the engine on to charge it. Right, so it's the last bit of the um, holiday, our half term week. As you can see, your battery's down at 87.8%, so it's dropped a bit overnight. Um, we're on our camp, Cambridge campsite at the moment with no electric up, so it's just the fridge dropping that down. But because this is my last day, what I'm going to do is show you how I turn all the solar and that off now. Because lithium batteries are better stored when they're not at 100%. So I don't want all this charging the batteries on the way home. So if going to the solar, if you click the little cog in the corner go to battery and when it says charge enable that little tiny blue tick 
tick that and it says that you turn it off click OK and there that's the solar off and I'll do the same now with the um, B2B again going to the B2B Bluetooth app click on the little cog go into battery settings and again turn that off and again it tell me that it's switched off so everything now is switched off we're not going to charge our batteries at all um, the fridge is still running at the moment so by the time we get home I expect the um, amp house probably would have dropped down to 170 maybe um, so and it will carry on dropping a little bit over the next four weeks we're not going to go away for about four weeks because um, the van pulls about 0.1 of an amp so that's fine with this lithium battery it keeps it below the 100% mark um, which uh, means the battery lasts longer over a period of time one last thing if you have got the AGM batteries um, you can leave your solar on um, to keep your charge up but if you have problems with solar or the fuse blows or something like that and you lose solar you're going to kill your battery over a month a couple of months not being used because they, the vans do pull current so this switch down here which is on the passenger side is an isolation switch on if you've only got the AGM you can switch that to off and it will turn off all the power to the van lit from the ledger and then the AGM will stay a bit more charged. It is better to float charge them. If you've got mains and you're storing it in with a mains hookup, connect up your mains hookup and leave it, leave that on and you, you leave it on float charging. And if your solar is good, then obviously leave that on and, and leave it run on solar. Alright guys, so we're back home now. Um, as you can see my battery's dropped down to 87.4%. Amp hours 174 amp hours. Nothing's charging the battery at the moment and nothing's gaining in or out. It's saying 0 point, uh, it's 0 0.042, but it's not actually showing a current in or out. So nothing's charging it, nothing should be coming out. Um, and this is how I'm going to leave the battery for the next four weeks. I'll keep an eye on it, maybe every couple of weeks through the apps, because I can do that from indoors. Um, that's another beauty thing of these Bluetooth apps. They do travel quite well through the, um, the walls. All right, guys, so that's it for this vlog. Um, it's a little bit of information on the battery, the Roman battery, um, the power that we use when we're away and how well the solar works and that, which might be of interest to some people out there. Um, I leave this battery like this now, uh, at this percentage, with no charge on it, because it's the best way of leaving lithium from what we've all been told. Um, what I'll hope to do in the future, one day, I might do a test on the fridge. I want to see how much um, current it takes to start up the fridge initially on a free bar, um, leaving it on permanently until it gets up to full temperature and then doing the same thing how much current you use and um, putting it on night mode and seeing how long it takes to get to full temperature and stuff just to see what's the most economy way of getting your fridge up to full temperature so I might be able to do that at some point um, and the next thing I'm going to be doing is fitting that charger that I said about the Victron charger so I'll be getting on that um, the next few weeks and hopefully I'll upload that vlog soon so please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like the vid vlogs and I'll try and get some more up there as soon as I can